It's been a while since I created a GNS3 installation video. Jeremy and the team have done a lot of work on the web UI. And I wanna show you an updated video of the GNS3 installation process. It's a lot easier today than it was in the past. Jeremy and team are focusing on the web UI. That's the future of GNS3, makes it a lot easier. Rather than having a GNS3 VM and a GNS3 client and having to get them to talk to each other, which often has problems, especially say on Windows or Mac, the focus is on a GNS3 VM and then you use a web interface. So just your browser to connect to the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna show you how to get GNS3 installed and running on a Windows laptop. In this demonstration, I'm doing all the work on this Windows laptop. I am controlling it from my Mac, but the installation work is being done on the laptop. So let's see how long it takes me to get GNS3 installed and running. So in a web browser, go to GNS3, click free download, and don't select these options. Scroll down and select download the GNS3 VM, and then select the GNS3 VM for the hypervisor that you're going to use. In my example, I'm gonna use VMware Workstation and Fusion. So I'm gonna download the GNS3 VM 2.2.22 in this example, and save it to my downloads directory. Okay, so when you watch this video, there may be a later release of GNS3. The process, however, is very similar. So even if they've released GNS3 2.2.23 or 2.3 or 2.5 or even version 3.0, the process is very similar to what I'm showing you here. Now, when it comes to hypervisors, lots of debate about which hypervisor is best. You're basically going to need to run the GNS3 VM on something. So on Windows, in my example, on this Windows laptop, I could use VMware Workstation Player, I could use VMware Workstation Pro, I could use VirtualBox as an example. There are advantages and disadvantages to each of those. VMware Workstation Player is free, but it has some restrictions. You can't create snapshots as an example, which you can do in VMware Workstation Pro. VirtualBox is free software, but when I asked Jeremy these questions like, which is the best? He always comes back to saying VMware Workstation Pro if you can or VMware Workstation Player. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. The reason for that is typically VirtualBox doesn't do nested virtualization as well as VMware does. Okay, so that's downloaded. I'll select Show in Folder. I'll right click on that and click Extract All, and then I'll simply extract it to my Downloads directory. Okay, so in my Downloads directory, I've got this folder and inside there, I've got an OVA file. I'm gonna to wanna to open that in VMware Workstation Pro or Player. In this example, I'll show you Player because it's free software. So in Google, I'll simply type download VMware Player. And I'll click on the first download link. I'll put a link to this below this video if you can't find it. VMware sometimes change their websites. So the links change. But at the moment, as an example, under Workspace, they have an option where you can get Workstation Player and download Workstation Player. So you can click Download to download it. But I'm gonna use this link, which I find better. I'm gonna click Download Now. And I'm gonna download the software to my Windows computer. Now, this is my opinion. I have found that VMware Player is perhaps being crippled a lot more than it was in the past. They're trying to upsell you to Workstation Pro, which I understand, but it's a bit of a pain that they making it hard in some ways to use Workstation Player, but it's still okay. So what I'll do is open that in folder and I'll double click on the VMware Workstation Player executable and I'll click run, click yes to install the software. Installation starts. It's a very basic installation. I'm gonna click next on the wizard. You need to agree to the terms of this license. Basically, Workstation Play is free for non-commercial use, so if you're in an educational environment or you're just studying at home, you can use the software. I'm gonna click next. Click next. I'm not gonna join the customer experience program just before I click next, I'm gonna open up control panel because I wanna show you that in Network and Sharing Center, 
under change adapter settings, I don't currently have a virtual network interface card for VMware Workstation Player. I do have one for VirtualBox. I do have my physical Wi-Fi interface. Hypervisor software such as VMware Workstation Player will create virtual adapters on your computer. That's normal. So back in the installation, I'll click Next, click Next, and click Install. And what you should notice when this installs is that virtual network interfaces are added to control panel on this computer. You can see it's saying installing virtual network drivers. And there you go, we've got one network driver installed, Ethernet 2, here's Ethernet 3. That is normal behavior. And I'm gonna click Finish now, now that the installation is completed. So VMware Workstation Player has been installed the next step is to get GNS3 imported into VMware Workstation Player. So back in my downloads directory, I'm gonna to go to the OVA file that was extracted, and I'm gonna open this with VMware Player. Okay, I need to give the GNS3 VM a name. So I'm gonna call this 2222 because that's the version I downloaded. I'm gonna leave it in the default directory and I'll click import. So just move this up a bit. The GNS3 VM is now being imported. Now before you start this, we need to have nested virtualization enabled in the BIOS of the computer. So at this point, I'm gonna show you how to get nested virtualization enabled in the BIOS of this computer. If you've already got nested virtualization enabled on your computer, you can go to this timestamp. So skip this part where I'm showing you how to get nested virtualization enabled. It's basically VTX or AMDV needs to be enabled in the BIOS of your computer to allow for nested virtualization of a VM. Now in this example, I've got an Asus laptop. It's got an Intel CPU and I've got an HP laptop that's got an AMD CPU. The process that you follow will vary depending on the manufacturer. So on Asus, as an example, I need to reboot the laptop and press F2 to go into the BIOS settings. On HP, I need to use F10 to go into the BIOS settings. So refer to the documentation for your manufacturer to determine which key you need to use to get into the BIOS. Or just use Google to do a search to find out which key to use to get into the BIOS for your specific laptop or computer. So I'll now show you how to enable VTX on a laptop that has an Intel processor, as well as a laptop that has an AMD processor. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is shut the laptop down. So I'm gonna click power, shut down, to shut the computer down. Laptop has been shut down. Now because this is an Asus laptop, I need to press power and F2. So F2 will take me to the BIOS. And as you can see, I'm now in the BIOS of the computer. So they tell you which keystrokes to use. So as an example, right arrow will take me from one menu to the other. So I've gone from the main menu to advanced. And what I wanna enable is Intel virtualization technology. At the moment, it's disabled. So I wanna select that option, once again, using the arrow keys. Go to Intel Virtualization Technology, press enter, and then specify enabled. So what I'm gonna do now is use the right arrow key, go to save and exit, make sure that I've selected save and exit, press enter, and then press enter again to save the configuration and exit. Laptop is now rebooted. And now I can enter my PIN and log in. And there you go, I've logged into the laptop. Okay, so I'll do something similar on this computer with an AMD processor. Go to the start menu, I'll select power options, and I'll select shutdown to shut down the computer. Computer is now shutting down. Okay, this is a HP laptop, so I need to use F10. So I'll start the laptop, press F10. Okay, so something similar needs to be done here. I'm gonna to go to system configuration, 
virtualization technology. So virtualization technology is currently disabled. What I need to do is press enter, select enabled, press enter, and then I need to exit. So save my configuration and exit. Press enter to save the changes. The laptop is now rebooted. We can see that the HP laptop is booting up. This is an older laptop, so it's quite slow. Okay, I need to put my password in, press enter to log in. I've now successfully logged in. Okay, so you've got nested virtualization enabled in the BIOS of your computer. Let's continue the installation. Okay, so at this point we asked, do we wanna install the VMware tools for Linux? I'm gonna say download and install. We asked, do we wanna allow the app to make changes? Yes. And as you can see, the GNS3 VM has booted up. Now in this example, I didn't make any changes to VMware. One of the things it's doing is it's not using a bridged interface. So if I go to play and manage virtual machine settings, you can see various settings about the virtual machine. You can see the memory, you can see the processors as an example. Notice a virtualized Intel VTX or AMD V. That's why we needed to enable VTX in the BIOS of the computer. But once again, notice here, we've got a host only and a NATed network interface rather than bridged. So I won't be able to connect to that GNS3 VM from my Mac at the moment. But what I can do is open up a web browser and I'll connect to the IP address of the GNS3 VM. And what you should see is something like this. GNS3 is installed and running. All I need to do now is create a project. So I'll call this my first project. Click add project. Interface is fairly intuitive. I won't cover all of that detail here. I'll just show you how to get a topology setup. So click on add node and I'll drag a VPCS device into the topology. I'll drag another one and I'll drag a switch into the topology. So what I've got now is a topology of two PCs and a switch. I'll click on add link, select the first PC, select the switch, select the switch again, second ethernet interface, select the interface of the PC and I'll click start to start up the nodes. And then what I can do is right click and click web console. Now in this example, because I'm using Brave, it's blocking a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna disable that. So it refreshes, right click web console. And now when I press enter, I see PC one. Right click here, web console, I see PC two. Now the resolution is quite limited on this laptop. So what you may wanna do rather than doing it that way is you can open the web console in a separate tab. So you can either use it like this. So here's my web console, I'll make this a bit smaller. Or open it up in a separate tab. Okay, so this is not refreshing nicely. Let me try that again. So open up web console. Here we go, we've got PC1, PC2. On PC1, I'll set an IP address of that on PC2 IP address this and hopefully from PC1 I'll be able to ping PC2 which I can and on PC2 I can ping PC1. There you go, very basic network up and running within GNS3. I've got GNS3 running within VMware Workstation Player on a Windows laptop. There's a GNS3 VM. I don't need a GUI installed on my PC to run this. Now GNS3 has a lot of options and I won't show you all those options. I'll just show you as an example that you can change the symbols used by devices. So you may prefer using a symbol like this for your PC. So I'll right click, change symbol, make that a client like that and on the switch, change the symbol 
to say something like this and click apply. This switch doesn't have a console and that's why I can't access the console of that switch. It's a built-in switch in GNS3. But I'll show you in other videos how you can add devices to a GNS3 topology. At this point, I simply wanted to show you that you can get a network up and running where one PC can ping another PC within GNS3. Now, if you're struggling and you have issues, you can get support from the GNS3 community. Use the link below to connect to the GNS3 community and get help from people in the community. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble. Want to wish you all the very best.